Hey Siri, cabinet lights. Okay. Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Shabazz. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to install the Philips Hue light strips for your kitchen cabinet lighting. So there's a couple reasons why I chose the Philips Hue light strips for this project. One being that I wanted to be able to control the lights using Siri, because we do have a HomePod. But you are able to use Alexa or a Google Home as well. So the second reason why I wanted to use the Philips Hue light strips is because we are invested in the Philips Hue ecosystem. So we do have the hub currently, and half of our lights in our house are the Philips Hue smart bulbs. There's also a few other benefits of using the Philips Hue bulbs in general, and that is that you can program the lights to come on and off at certain times. You can control the lights using uh, the HomePod or Siri or Alexa or the Google Home. You can set timers so that your lights come on certain times of the day, turn off certain times of the day. You can also set routines so that, you know, at night all your lights turn off. So there are other lighting options to use for kitchen cabinet um, lighting. I chose the Philips Hue because I'm a nerd. I wanna be able to control my lights with Siri and things like that and do cool things with my phone with it and just program them. And so in this video, I'm actually gonna show you guys how to route the wiring for the light strips and also how to extend the light strips to all of the kitchen cabinets. The way that the Philips Hue light strips come, it's just one long strip. And the way that Philips Hue designed the strips, you're not able to really cut the strips and extend them. Once you cut the strip one time, that's basically it. You can't use the rest of that strip anymore. But the way that I'm gonna show you guys how to do it is that you can actually reuse that strip. So one thing that you wanna do is you wanna evaluate your kitchen, determine how many light strips will fit under each cabinet. Each Philips Hue light strip has about six sections. So some of the cabinets might take one section, one of them might take two, the other one might take three sections. So you really wanna evaluate how much material you're gonna need. And you could possibly buy one strip and an extension or two strips or however you guys wanna do it. It all depends on uh, your outlet situation as well. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna hide all of my wires just to give it that clean finish. I'm only gonna use one outlet, that way I can control all the lights just with one command. And you can technically use two outlets and control it with one command as well. It's all, it all depends on how you name your lighting. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate where to cut the Philips Hue light strips at, and then also solder in the new wiring for the extensions to go to the next part. So the wiring that I'm gonna be using to extend the light strips is actually just an ethernet cable, just because they're very thin wires and they work perfect for this situation. To do this, you will have to have some kind of soldering knowledge. I will link a video in the description that teaches you how to solder. I'm not going to teach you how to solder in this video, I'm just gonna show you where to solder. So to do this modification, you will need obviously a Philips Hue light strips. You'll need something to cut the Philips Hue light strip with. You'll need a razor blade just to kind of peel back the protective layer. You'll need a hot glue gun just to uh, glue the wiring when you're done. We don't want any shorts or anything like that. You will also need a Philips Hue hub. If you don't have one, you won't be able to use the lights. You will need some ethernet cables and the length of those ethernet cables does depend on your kitchen configuration. Another thing that you will need is some heavy duty 3M double-sided tape because the tape that actually comes on the Philips Hue strips sucks. It's terrible. And I actually mounted it the first time and within like minutes, they were just started drooping down and falling off. I've always had really good luck with that heavy duty 3M double-sided sticky tape. So I highly recommend you use that for this, this situation. And another thing you will need is a drill. So if you wanna hide all the wires, you are going to have to drill through your cabinets. A lot of people might not feel comfortable doing this. You may be able to find an alternate uh, solution to that. But however, I did drill through my cabinets. I didn't think that the holes were big enough to cause any you know, significant damage or affect resale value or anything like that. And all the holes are pretty much hidden. And I, I will show you the way that I routed all my wiring and where I drilled all my holes. So the first step will be to determine where your power cable is gonna be. I do have an outlet right on top of my microwave. So I did drill a hole and route the wiring through the cabinet all the way down on one side. And then you can see the little control module, I mounted it right at the bottom of the cabinet. That was my starting point for the LED strips. So the next step would be to determine how many sections of the Philips Hue strip you need under every cabinet. Here's a picture of my configuration and how many sections I used for each cabinet. So like I was telling you guys earlier, there's six sections to the each Philips Hue light strip. And you can tell where the each section ends 
is right here. It's got a little line right here where you're supposed to cut it. Uh, what we're actually gonna do is cut this rubber part around it and then cut this soldering point right here. So for the section that I'm working on right now, I'm gonna need three sections. So I'm gonna cut this rubber protective cover off just right through it. And then go around to the ends. And then I'm just gonna slice going this way so I can pull it back. That'll expose this soldering point right here. Just gonna peel this back. Peel this back. And so what you're gonna wanna do is actually cut right in the middle of this the best that you can. And that's where we're gonna solder each wire from that ethernet cable. I'm gonna be using some side cutters that I have laying around. I'm just gonna line this up the best that I can. So what you'll end up with is this right here, and then you will solder each wire to these points. So what I did here is I just put some scotch tape, probably not the best tape to use, but some scotch tape around the rubber part just to hold it back while I do the soldering. So with the ethernet cable, what you're gonna wanna do is just slice this open on the side just to expose these wires. And what I do is I just cut the end of this part off. And these will be the wires that you solder. So to strip back these wires, I just use my fingernails because they're really thin. You're gonna wanna make sure that you, you just twist the ends of these wires so they stay together. So on the Phillips Hue strip itself, there are some letters on here and you're gonna wanna remember what color wire it goes to each one. That way for the next strip, you can wire the same colors to each terminal. And the way that I wired mine, I'm gonna start with the blue. And so the way that I found the solder is the best is by pre-tinning the wire and then pre-tinning the actual uh, light strip. And what pre-tinning is, is basically you put a little bit of solder on the wire and then a little bit of solder on the light strip and then solder them together. Just like that. You can see that first. That first terminal has a little bit of solder on it now. And you'll want to repeat the steps for all. And then you're just going to solder the wire onto the light strip. And just to explain this one more time, so after you cut the light strip, each wire will go from one terminal to the next terminal. And you do have to make sure that the right wire goes in the right spot. And this process will allow you to extend your Phillips Hue light strips. So after you're done soldering all the wires, you do want to apply some hot glue just to give the wires some extra protection and to make sure that the wires don't touch each other later on. So after you're done soldering everything, you do want to plug in the lights just to make sure that they work before mounting them. And like I mentioned earlier, the double-sided tape that comes on the light strips is terrible. So right here, I'm using that thicker 3M double-sided tape, which works amazing. one of the strips that runs through. I did route the wire behind the, the microwave and I zip tied it just so it's not as noticeable. And I routed the light strip underneath these cabinets. And then they do go back up here. In the back I drilled a hole Throw the hole in here so they go back they run back up here and over this window 
and I did hide the wire using a balance. The wire does come down, back down inside the cabinet, which I drilled holes for, and then it comes right back out here. And here's the last LED strip. And once again, I did route the wire above the window just because I wanted it to be one strip and one command and I wanted all the wiring to be hidden. Technically, I could have plugged one in here, but it wouldn't have looked as good, I think. Hey Siri, cabinet lights. Hey Siri, cabinet lights red. Hey Siri, Cabinet lights blue. All six. Hey Siri, cabinet lights green. Okay. All six. Hey Siri, cabinet lights white. Okay. All six. Hey Siri, cabinet lights. And there you have it guys. Hopefully you guys found this video very helpful. I also hope you guys thought it was a cool project and it's something that you guys would wanna do. Let me know if you guys have completed any other lighting projects or any other projects in general around the house. I love doing things around the house and I love these customized projects. If you found this video helpful, please comment below and let me know. So I will be posting more videos like this to my channel, just kinda of do-it-yourself stuff around the house to my Tesla. I'll also be posting some food related videos, some spicy challenges, can't wait to do those. So please stay tuned and subscribe to my channel for more videos coming up soon.